What if you could run an agent in your terminal that is a coding partner that actually understands your entire code base without you having to constantly feed it files or context? Sounds cool, right? Well, that's exactly what Entropic New Cloud Code does. And it's unlike anything we've seen before. Forget AI Copilot that needs you to handhold them. This isn't Cursor, this isn't Windsurf. Cloud Code is a whole new kind of coding experience. One without coding editor, where your assistant follows along as you work and can edit, test, and even commit code for you. But there's a catch. It's powerful, but it's also expensive. So is it worth it? Stick around because by the end of this video, you'll know exactly if cloud code is the future of coding or just another overpriced tool. When Entropic released this new model, they also introduced cloud code. Cloud code is what I want to show you in this video. I want to show you how to use it, how I've been personally using it. I got access. This is currently in private beta. I apply and then they send me an access. So I want to show you what I've seen. Unlike other companies, Entropic really focuses on balance, structure, and creativity. And with this new model, Cloud 3.7 Sonnet, they've affirmed that their focus is going to be for developers. So building models for software developer. Entropic actually recently released an Entropic Economic Index. And if you go through it, you'll see that it's evident why they decided to go that way. Because about close to 40% of the use of AI model is used by programmers, by software developers. They've made the stats, they've analyzed you know, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of messages to try to figure out how people in different job type actually use AI. And as you can see, computer and mathematics stands out. 40% of the cues come from developers. Entropic has been really focusing on building better tools for developers. And this release is no exception. I saw this guy on Twitter saying, I bet some people get a pricing shock using cloud. I only ask one question and it costs $1. In the doc, it says an average developer will incur $5 to $10 per day, but it could be $100 per hour for a large code base. It's interesting because when you go over the marketing of Entropic, when they talked about the benefit of cloud, they actually expressed that 45 plus minutes is saved for interval dev tasks completed in one pass with cloud codes. In my personal experience of it, I can't tell you if it saved me that much time, but what I've noticed is the cost. It is quite pricey. I've only ran two queries, one to write tests and one to fix the test because it wasn't working once it was written. And as you can see, it cost me about $2.56 for a duration of nine minutes and 26 seconds. So if we get back to this matrix over here, you can multiply that amount by five to have an idea of how much it will cost you for every 45 minutes, so close to $13. So it is not a cheap model, but it's certainly very efficient. Entropic has a very interesting way of testing the power of the Cloud Sonnet 3.7 model, and I do it by testing it with Pokemon. So this is an interesting thing because they show how the model has getting better and better actually playing Pokemon. And as you can see over here, we see that previous model were only able to get to a certain number of action in the game. But this new model 3.7 Sonnet actually got all the way to the end. So what is Cloud Code? Cloud Code is an agency coding tool that lives in your terminal. It understands your code base and it helps you code faster by executing routine tasks, applying complex code and handling Git workflow. It is pretty cool. You can literally head over cloud code, and then you can actually ask it to review your codes, write your tests, fix your code base, fix your TypeScript, and just by typing right here in the terminal. And the way you execute it is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is type cloud. And as soon as you run cloud, and voila, and it's good to go. And you need to make sure to run it in the directory where you want to use it, because then it's going to get context about your application within this directory. Because it needs context of my application, I'm worrying that it's actually fitting it too much code 
which is incurring the cost of using it. Application like Windsurf and Cursor probably don't send all of the code to the model for two reasons. One, they don't want to feed it too much or it might lose context into what you're actually asking. And second, that might actually help in terms of cost saving. But <laughs> I don't think that Entropy is really worried about cost saving here. What they're just doing, they just want you to use the model as much as possible. So it is getting quite expensive. When you run the application for the first time, this is actually what you see. You see the cloud codes and then you log in, you follow the instruction, then it will ask you to come back to the websites and authenticate. And once you're done authenticating, then you have access to the application right away. And you need to make sure to obviously have a probably a credit card on file to make sure that it can actually consume your credit card for any request that it's making in the application. I'm going to keep talking about those costs because these costs do add up. Let me refresh this. I don't think this is the latest version. So I spent about $2.56 on two queries and I've made about, let's see, how many tokens were sent to cloud? 2.8-ish million were sent to cloud from those two single requests. Cloud is not cheap. It's actually quite expensive. Cloud Sonnet is not the most expensive model in the cloud model family. Actually, Opus is. I haven't heard any announcement from cloud about an upcoming Opus model. But what's interesting about Sonnet is like it's an hybrid model that can not only think but also reason. And this is what's very interesting about this new approach. If you want to learn more about this model, make sure to check out Cloud 3.7 Sonnet system cards. Sometimes they also share some benchmark that could be interesting. Not that benchmark always matter, but it's a good way to see how they have actually tested those models. And in this case, they've tested this model in terms of whether it can resolve real world GitHub issues like a software engineer. And this model by far blew the chart out of the water. They've achieved 70.3% accuracy on the SWE bench. And I was verified. That is pretty cool. I'm going to quickly show you how I've been using it. So instead of running the query because this is quite expensive, let me show you what I actually ran when I used it earlier. All I did was to ask it to write me a test. So you can see here, you can type, try to fix type check errors. Here, I ask it add test coverage for GitHub import issues endpoints. And then it goes in and start to think about how it's going to do it. And then what's cool about it is that when it's doing it, you can either give it full control and execute command as it goes along, like creating files and so on, or you can just accept it step by step. So it's a fully autonomous agent. And I think that this is getting us closer to have something like Devin. So you can, in one hand, use Windsurf or Cursor to assist you while you're coding. And on the second end, you can have a tool like this that will be like the automation and do something for you. And augmenting your work, but also adding automation if you want automation. And I have to say, it only took me two queries to make this work. The first time it set all of the project correctly. So all the, the, the testing setup, all of the library, it said all of that correctly. And then when he made mistakes, he detected it on its own and fixed them. I didn't have to do anything. And when it was completed, I checked my costs and the first query was 0 0.85. And I says, I'll fix the test issue first. Let me check what's wrong by running the test comment. Then he ran the test comment on its own. I was able to read what was wrong and start addressing each of those test errors one by one. This is incredible. This is adding so much value to your workflow. If you were to do that in Cursor or WinServe, you would have had to fit it the text, the file. I haven't had a lot of luck writing unit tests with WinServe or Cursor. So I think this will be a very interesting use for it. I've been posting on Twitter asking for to Cursor and WinServe to release a feature that is a TDD mode where you can toggle it and have the agent writing tests before implementing codes. And I think that would be a really groundbreaking feature if they do something like that, because then AI can write the test, implement your code, and then run the test to make sure it's working. Or you can even use your rules to make sure it's always running the test when you finish implementing a feature. And this is something that I've been doing recently in my own app where in my global rules, let me show you my global rules. This is something I've updated recently. So in my global rules now, I say before creating new files, always run three dash I 
which is Ignore. Let me show you what this comment actually ran if you're not familiar with three. It's a pretty cool comment. You can start it with brew and it will give the full directory structure of your project. And by having context of that, it's able to avoid duplicating files. So because I was getting to those issues where every single time it will duplicate files or if I had a, a .js file, it would create a .gsx file and then I had duplicates. I wanted it to avoid doing that. So I just passed that. And when it's running the code, it will actually suggest to run the command every time you run the code. And then I can actually just approve it. Or if you're in YOLO mode, it will just run it automatically every single time. The fact that we have that mean that if we wanted to run the test, right, something like this, all we will have to do is to add something like when you finish an implementation, run the test like that. And it will just know that as soon as it's finished implementing the code, it can run those tests. So if you've written your tests and then you want it to always run the test after you implement a feature, this is how you can do it. And I find that it would be really, really cool if actually that was part of the agentic workflow of Cursor where I could just toggle the option to have that by default. And it would just write the test, implement it, and then test. Once he did that, he was able to run the test on his own and he finally figured out the issue getting closer the issue is with the comment array in our mock data let's fix that and the other remaining issues this one took a long time to run it really felt like the, the devin experience that i've been hearing about all over the internet that really felt like having a developer in my team that is the test specialist that can just handle the test for me while i'm focusing on building features and building my application the way i'll be using that moving forward will be to use it to write unit tests for me so i can have a TDD approach, or I like to call it test-driven generative coding. So TDGC, where I will generate the, the test for my feature first using cloud code. And once this is generated, then I can update my rules to make sure that every time the AI implements new features from my PRD, it can first run the test to make sure that it's passing the test. This way things are not breaking. And also when it's implementing new, new features, doing feature change, to make sure that it always runs those tests in the end to make sure it's not breaking all the features in my code base. The way I'm trying to use it is literally just for mostly tests. I don't need code reviews at the moment, but if I had a CI CD where I would deploy my code and I wanted to make sure that it's being reviewed before being merged, this is something that you can implement into your workflow. It's just making sure that you review your code before it's actually going live. So finally, you have the ability to do PR comments. There's a couple tool out there that allow you to do AI commits there's, I think there's literally a tool called AI Commit. I don't know if I have it installed here, but it's, it's literally AI Commit. Uh, yeah, I, I do have it. And so if you install AI Commit, it will look at your code change, summarize it, and write a commit for you. This way you have like a commit message that summarizes everything that happened into your code. So you can also do that with Cloud, where you can have it write the commit for you. So if you head over to the documentation, you have a session here called Cloud Code. And in it, this is where you have the overview of how to use it. But you also have a session where they show you different like, example of how to actually use cloud code. Like just like, you know, test and debug your code. This is some prompt that you can use. So think about this like prompt example that you can use. And if you scroll to the bottom, this is where you see all the comments and how to use those comments. Cloud code tutorial. So there's more example that I found here. Generate documentation. I haven't used it with images, but you can actually use it with images as well. And it can refactor your code just by typing suggest how to refactor util.js to use modern JavaScript features. So in short, a way for you to delegate engineering tasks directly from the terminal. This is what I use it for and I, what I believe it'll be used for moving forward. And I find that super helpful. So it's like having a developer that can take care of tasks for you in your terminal. So where are we on the Entropic timeline? Entropic delivered us Cloud Assist. That was a way to help individuals do their current work better. With Cloud Code, we now have achieved Cloud Collaborates, which is a way to have Cloud do hours of independent work for you on par with Expert, which will explain what every person or team are capable of. And what's coming next, that will be a way for the agent to find breakthrough solution to challenging problem that will have taken teams years to achieve. Think about this like this. We have deep research in one hand from OpenAI, Perplexity, and so on. 
that is able to do works of 30 days or more in a matter of a few minutes, Cloud Pioneers will be something similar, but for achieving breakthrough solution. And that's where we are heading with Entropic. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure to check one of those videos right here. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And I see you guys in the next one.